الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أنزلنا إليكم كتابا فيه ذكركم أفلا تعقلون صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I have just recited to you comes from Surah Al-Anbiya The ayah itself is very moving If you pay attention to it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about his book and the message that is inside this book and it is an advice for all of us to look back and seek what you can get out of this book and apply in your life and improve yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ indeed, أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ We have sent a book to you, kitaban. To you we have sent a book. Fihi in it, dhikrukum. You are mentioned. Afala ta'qilun. Don't you think and ponder over it? So this is a very moving ayah and a very thought-provoking ayah for an individual who is reciting Quran. The ayah comes from Surah Al-Anbiya and this is ayah number 10. Associated with this ayah, there's a story that I want to share with you. The story happened many years after this ayah was revealed, but this was the times of companions around this time. The story is reported by Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi. And he wrote a book in which he reports in this book a story of Ahnaf ibn Qais. Ahnaf ibn Qais is a man who accepted Islam during the times of the Prophet. But he never had a chance to meet the Prophet. And this was the guy who always stood with the Muslims, even at the time when false prophets were raised around his areas. He was the one who discouraged his people to go and seek help from these false prophets. He served as a general during the times of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a very important character in the history of Islam, early history of Islam, Ahnaf ibn Qais. When he heard the ayah, when it was being recited, he said, bring me a copy of the Qur'an. Today I shall find where am I mentioned in the Qur'an. That means, what are the qualities that I possess that I may find in the Qur'an and what Qur'an says about that individual that has those qualities. So a Qur'an was brought to him. And he started flipping through the pages. He started reciting different ayahs of the Qur'an. I will share with you only a few of them because we only have 10 minutes. So one of the ayah that he ran into comes from Surah Al-Dhariyat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ وَبِالْأَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُّ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the people who get up in the middle of the night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek His forgiveness. And whenever they had an opportunity, they give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he went into another chapter in the Quran, Surah Al-Furqan. He read about some other people where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا These are the people who spend part of their night standing and prostrating in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are different people. Then he went into Surah Ali Imran, where he learned about the people, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Those people who give out in charity, open or in close. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ When they're mad and angry, they don't show it. They hold it. They're patient. These are humble people. They're forgiving people. 
Wallahu who you have bull Mohsinin and Allah love these people who are so patient and forgiving. These are the people that Allah loves, these are the characteristics that Allah loves. Then He moved on to another chapter in the Quran, Surah Al Hashr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, These are the people that they have very limited means. But they, that doesn't stop them from spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They themselves have very dire needs. They're poor people. But when the need comes, their hearts are open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when you do not give, that's the closeness of the heart. These are the people who have overcome their greed to an extent that when they look at the needs of others, they forget about their own needs. These are the people who will succeed. Then he moved on. He read about some other people in Surah Al-Shu'ara. These are the people who stay away from the big sins, والفواحش, and the indecent acts. And whenever they get angry, they humble themselves by saying, Istighfar. Who am I to get angry? What is my capacity to show anger for myself? No way. This is a form of kibr, proudness. So they go and say istighfar. وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ And these are the people who have responded to their Lord by establishing prayer. وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ And they consult each other in the matters of affairs. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they spend in what we, whatever we have given. So these are different categories of people. When he read all of these ayahs, now he showed his reaction. He said, Oh Allah, I am among none of these people. I don't belong to any of these categories. So where am I? Then he continued. Then he ran into some other people in Surah As Safat. <laughs> these are the people when this told to them that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah. Yastakbirun. <laughs> They're proud. They said, oh, we don't accept the message. We don't think anybody should be worshipped. There is no God. These are the people. And then on the next day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُونَ أَإِنَّا لَتَارِكُوا آلِهَتِنَا لِشَاعِرِ مَجْنُونَ And among them there are people who are idol worshippers. But when it is told to them there is nobody to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start calling the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala madman. Majnoon. And then there are people. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ When Allah is mentioned alone. إِشْمَأَذَّتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ Their hearts shrink. And they do not like it. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ But when the idols are mentioned, when the other gods are mentioned, their hearts open up with joy. Then these people are mentioned. Then some other people are mentioned that these are the people on the day of judgment when they will be thrown in the hellfire. The people in the Jannah will ask these people, Ma salakakum fi saqar? What did you do that you were put in such a horrible position? Even in the hellfire, there are stages. Why are you in such a horrible state in the hellfire? <laughs> they will say, <laughs> We never used to pray. <laughs> we never used to spend in the cause of charity. We never fed anybody. We never helped anybody. And what we used to do, we used to make fun of the religion. We used to make fun of the messengers. We used to make fun of the people who would be here to guide us. And we will join the people who would make fun of them. And we used to deny this day. We used to deny this punishment. And now that we see it with our own eyes. So Ahnaf was moved. 
Ahlaf ibn Qais stood up and said, Oh Allah, please do not put me among these people. I do not belong to the first category and I do not want to be in this category. And then he ran into another ayah. This is the ayah where he found himself. He went into many ayahs, I'm just shortening it up. So this is the ayah that comes from Surah At-Tawbah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآخَرُونَ اَعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ These are the people who know that they are sinners. خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا They know that their deeds are a mix of good and bad deeds. They realize it. They know it. They're not arrogant and proud about themselves. They're realistic people. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ And these are the people who understand this to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will forgive these people. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely forgiving and merciful. When Ahnaf ibn Qais look at this ayah, he said, this is me. This is me. I found myself in the Qur'an. This, these are my characteristics that I possess. So the question is, what are the characteristics that we possess? The Qur'an talks about. Have we seeked ourselves in this book? What are the good and the bads that we have? As we can improve on the goods, and we can remove the bads. It's all about working hard. Nobody's perfect. Nobody can ever be perfect. It's all about who comes with the best of the best. Ahsanu amala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this book as a guidance so that we open it and read from and spend time with it, understand it, apply it in our life, apply it in the lives of our families, the people around us, and make this world a better place. Somebody has to move forward. We cannot put it on the shoulder of other people and put blame on their shoulder. The question come in, what are we doing as an individual? أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ